Welcome everyone to our sixth Sunday after Pentecost worship experience. I'm Pastor Jeremy and I'm glad to be worshiping with you today. Our gospel reading today is the parable of the sower, a great reminder of who God is for us and for all people. As I've been saying for a few weeks, the times seem more fluid now than before, but I still urge us to continue living John Wesley's general rules for his Methodist societies. Do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. So grab your family, your coffee, and a Bible if you desire, and let us worship God together. I'd like to begin with prayer. Please pray with me. God of growth and new beginnings, enter into the struggles of our lives. Nurture our souls that we may be fertile ground for wisdom and love. Dwell within us that we may have strength of purpose to live out your calling each and every day. Amen. Now let's turn to Katie for our reading for today. Our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 13 verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 23. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares of the word of the world and lure of wealth, but cares of the world and lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to the living word. I'm recording this week in front of our raised bed vegetable gardens. They're pretty happy right now, but they weren't always this way. You see, they weren't here when we moved in. We removed landscape rock, shoved it under the deck, we leveled the ground. We put one box up last year, and since we didn't have a wheelbarrow, we filled the thing with bags upon bags of soil. The people at the garden center thought we were cute, which was probably a Minnesota nice way of saying, I can't believe how ridiculous they are. A couple new to garden boxes always coming back because we didn't have room in the car, nor did we buy enough soil the first time. Then this year, we completely deconstructed the first box, re-leveled the dirt, and, well, did it right. Hopefully they're now set to last for a long time. And we've got some rather happy plants. Tomato, basil, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, Japanese eggplant, jalapeno, kale, and more. Yum. I'm sure a number of you also have beautiful gardens and also love to spend time tending them. Knowing what it takes to have a happy and healthy garden, imagine with me for a moment what it would be like to be the gardener in our scripture reading from the Gospel of Matthew. You've got a lot of seeds, and you want to sow them, so you go out and start throwing them all over the place. 
on the sidewalk and streets, on Rocky Lake Superior shoreline, on wild patches of weeds, and on cultivated farmland. You care for them equally, and you wait. You sow seeds with abandon, no matter where they land, and let them grow where they will. The funny thing is, you get a good harvest from those that do grow. That's what the sower is doing in Jesus' parable in Matthew. Now, obviously, this is an interesting method for gardening, is it? Let's call it extreme gardening. The explanation of the parable that follows focuses on the hearers. Each type of ground is associated with someone who hears the word of the kingdom. Now, we often read this as a morality tale about how we should be the good soil. I think rather it might be a description of the spread of the gospel in the early church, that as the word spread, some did not respond, but those that did, and for those who did, the harvest was great. But even that isn't what I want to focus on today. I want us to think about extreme gardening and about failure. Whenever we garden, we take a risk. We risk that a plant won't grow no matter how hard we work to keep it alive. We put good effort into something that still may not survive. We have to give up a bit of control, knowing that there are factors beyond how well we do our part that may influence the success of the garden. But do we stop gardening because some of our plants die? No. We evaluate what may have gone wrong. Too much sun or shade for that type of plant, too much or too little water, something went wrong in the soil, and then we try again. We risk a little failure for a great reward. But when it comes to church, uh, for a while, we were used to playing it safe comfortably hoping that the right seeds would come into our garden that we call the church, ones that would germinate in our soil and grow alongside us and be compatible. Well, and then we noticed things were different from the church of the 1950s. Regular attendance at church used to mean showing up three out of four Sundays a month. In 2019, it was more like people felt they attended church regularly if they were in worship once every four to six weeks. And that was before the pandemic. Now I have no idea at all. I'm throwing a video online, seeing that 40 to 50 some different devices are viewing it. Sometimes that's more than one person at a time. Sometimes people watch the whole thing. Sometimes they only watch what they need to or have time for. And perhaps in a strange sense, this is a bit more what Jesus was talking about in the parable of the sower. The sower just keeps on doing the gracious thing. Some will hear it, some will not. But the sower just keeps on doing the gracious thing. Now it's probable that the author of Matthew was at a point in Christian history where he was trying to explain to his readers why not everyone was following Jesus. But that to me proves the point above. Can we give a little grace and admit that life is complex and that we are pulled in so many directions in life? And can we, instead of being judgmental, consider being like the ridiculously foolish sower in the parable? Because let's face it, the sower is a fool, throwing good seed on rocks and paths and weeds and soil alike without discrimination. That's no way to garden. Even the laziest, most inexperienced gardener knows that. And yet, the sower is the point, not the soil. God's grace is for all. God lavishes the good news of grace on all of us, ready or not. God doesn't distinguish among rocky or shallow or good people. And most of all, God doesn't give up. But finally, can we, too, offer the same? Can we offer God's love and grace to people without trying to judge first whether or not they are worthy of it? Can we be so generous of spirit that we are willing to fail? Can we invite people to church, whatever that means at any given moment, knowing that we can keep inviting people even if some say no? Can we be extreme gardeners like the sower? This time, hearing the parable of the sower, let's not worry so much about being the right kind of ground. That's important too. But let's remember that the sower is the main character in the parable, that the sower is an extreme gardener willing to risk throwing the seeds all over, 
knowing that this reckless abandon will still yield great results. With the seed of the good news of radical welcome and love in Jesus Christ, let us do the same. Let's just keep doing the gracious thing. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's now join Jill and Mary as we listen to or sing, You Are the Seed, Sois la Semilla. Let us continue in a time of prayer. I invite us to take a few deep breaths before I begin and call to mind people and situations about which you would like to pray during a time of silence. Here are some suggestions as we think about the time in which we live. People who have died, people infected with the virus, people at high risk of infection, hospitals, doctors, nurses, and staff, 
first responders, mental health professionals, and those struggling with mental health issues, people working in the midst of the pandemic and people out of work because of it, people working for systemic change toward justice and peace, leaders in our nation and world, scientists, journalists, parents, and their children. As we breathe, pray for these people, and I will close with a prayer adapted from John Killinger. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Let us pray. You are there, O oh God, even when we are unaware of you. You touch our lives with grace in a thousand ways, with the smiles of people we pass, the gurgling sounds of babies, the flowers growing where we didn't expect them, the taste of hot bread, the sight of a hawk sailing in a clear blue sky, the rustle of leaves on the trees, a letter or email or text from someone we love, the warmth of a friend's voice, the security of a favorite room in the house, the view from a window, the comfort of an old pair of shoes. How manifold are your gifts, O oh God, and how seldom we really praise you for all of them. Teach us to see with new eyes the wonders through which we move. Make children of us, for whom the world is vibrant with color and texture. Take away our weariness, our habit of not being present, our dullness to what is beautiful and holy. Make us sensitive to your grace in other people and to where you are moving in their lives. Show us how to celebrate the resurrection. And now we pray for the coming of your realm in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with me. Next week, we continue to worship on YouTube. See you here. And please continue to check your email for updates from Christy. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God look on you with favor and give you peace. Be well. Amen. <laughs>